if you believe this is the word of god if you believe the holy spirit knew what he was talking about if you believe that the holy spirit could have used the word human being instead of brother and then i asked myself why didn't he use it didn't he know what the condition of the world would be in the 20th 21st century i have a tremendous respect for the word of god i'll tell you that i think i that i don't think there's anyone here who can challenge me in respect for god's word and the proof of it is i have studied it for 55 years and i keep studying it today and i read it exactly we in our churches we have followed it exactly we followed the pattern exactly jesus said don't be called father or rabbi you're all brothers in all of our churches no we don't call anybody by any title except brother even the little small things the bible says a woman should veil her head when they pray or prophesy in all of our churches we teach that you know, a sister if she wants to pray publicly or prophesy share a word in the meeting she must veil her head we don't insist that she should veil her head if she's sitting in sitting in the meeting that's up to her most of our sisters do but uh, if someone doesn't have light on it we don't judge them we don't treat them like second class citizens we say we treat them like people who don't have light on this command that's all but i say if you ever get up to share a word or if you stand in your way you're standing in your seat and you share your word we will not allow you to share your word if you don't veil your head we are willing we are willing to offend you and you can leave the church and find another church where you're comfortable but we obey god's word we are not interested in numbers i've had people come up to me and say brother zack Uh, your standards are too high i say my show me the one place in scripture where my standard is higher than what god's word says um we believe in sisters dressing modestly and i don't care who it is even if it's an elder brother's daughter you see you got to dress modestly and i'll speak to them i'll speak to the father usually if it's his wife wife or daughter not dressed modestly because the word of god says that the bible says that we have to obey his word a man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god for so to me it's a matter of life and if a church is to have the life of jesus then it must obey god's word in these things so i don't go around with tapes measuring the length of people's dresses that's not my business i remember once one sister came up to me and said how shall i dress i said i'll tell you i don't have any lengths to tell you or any such thing i said imagine if jesus was living in the next street and he called you up one day and said i want you to come with me for a walk in the marketplace how would you dress to go and meet jesus to go with him in the marketplace where he would be proud to walk with you and say this is my sister dress like that not only when you come to church but when you go to work and all the time don't you want jesus to be with you all the time or you just want to impress people in the church that you dress very modestly there's such a lot of hypocrisy i tell you among christians and there are christian leaders who are afraid to offend them oh that's a relative of mine i couldn't care less if it's a relative of mine we stand against them my wife's brothers were part of a church they all got offended and left we don't care we know second corinthians 5:16 is a major verse for me i know no man according to the flesh second corinthians 5:16 i don't know anybody according to the flesh nobody is my special friend if an elder is wrong he's wrong the bible says rebuke an elder and i've done that some elders have got offended and left us god bless you brother i don't wish you any evil but i'll speak the truth to you because i don't want your blood to be on my hands in the final day i want to present christ exactly i want to obey god's word exactly that's the only way i can build the church let me turn you to isaiah chapter 66 Isaiah 66 we read here and the lord says he's talking about building the church in relation to our time and listen to these words let me paraphrase it in relation to building the church today thus says the lord heaven is my throne think of this heaven is god's throne and the earth this huge planet earth he says it's my footstool you know what a footstool it's a small little thing on the ground where people put their feet on he said this whole earth that you think is so big is just a place where i put my feet and you're trying to build a church for me over here where then is the church that you will build for me all those who are seeking to build a church in your localities listen to this the earth is a footstool that city or town of yours which you think has got so many million people <laughs> it's a small dot 
as far as God is concerned. And you're going to build my church, is it? You think you can build my church over there? You are so spirit filled and you know so much of the word and you went to conferences and you understood how to build the church and now you have understood the technique and you are going to build the church? And he says, I'll tell you who is going to build my church. The one I will look at, last part of verse 2, is the one who is humble and who contrite of spirit and who trembles at my word who reads something in scripture and trembles Lord I haven't obeyed that I've been careless with my eyes I've been trying to please people there I was afraid that some sister would get offended and leave our church or her husband will get offended I remember when my other son uh, Sandeep started a church a new church in California and um, he began to preach about a simple thing like women must veil their heads. Half the church left. Because those women didn't veil their heads. They took their husbands with them, proving that they were the head of the house. It was right that they didn't veil their heads because they were proving that uh, we are the head of the house, so we drag our husbands with us. They were honest in not veiling their heads, I agree. But I say we don't want such people and sisters in the church. And I told Sandeep, I'm proud of you. This is the way. Let them all go. Let's have a church with five people, ten people, two or three, Jesus said, where Jesus will be in the midst because we tremble at his word. Like, you know, I told you, some, some people came to me and said, your standards are too high. Brother Zach, I can't be a part of your church. I said, fine. That's why God has allowed so many other churches to exist, so that you go and sit there and don't waste our time here. I say, you're like a person who says, this hospital is too hygienic. I want to go to one that's a little bit of dirty so that we can... You, you never think of like that when you go to hospital. Oh, this school's got a very high standard. I don't want to much put my children here. Let me go to some other place which is a little more indisciplined. You never think like that when it comes to a school or a hospital. But you think like that when you come to a church. And I said, I'll tell you why. Because you value education. You value hygiene. But you couldn't care less for spirituality. You couldn't care less for God's word. And I'll tell you the truth. You can get offended with me if you like. But a lot of people have got offended with me. But in the day of judgment, those who have heard and obeyed will be thankful. Because I tell people this also, if you see a single thing that I'm preaching in my church, which is not found in scripture, point it out to me, I'll stop it. And if you find a single thing taught in the New Testament that we are not trying our best to practice in our church, show it to us, we'll practice it. I challenge people like that. Can you challenge people like that in your church, whichever church you're trying to build, to tell people, Brother, tell me something I'm not preaching, which is in the New Testament. We'll start preaching it from today. And tell me something which we are doing or preaching in this church, which is not found in the New Testament, and we'll stop it immediately. But we're not going to be influenced by people who say, oh, this is too high a standard, or somebody will get offended. Let the whole church get offended and go. I'm not bothered. We have to stand before God. I don't believe that a God for whom the earth is a footstool, that I am such a big person to build a church for him. No, I'm not. I'm a nobody. I'll always be a nobody. But I want to tremble at his word. And I want to say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, all the nice things you may hear is all very good. But if you don't tremble at God's word, and you're not humble and broken and contrite in spirit, if you don't take the lowest place, you cannot build a church. I'll tell you that.